Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gaming here, and in this video, we want to talk about Jing Yuan, the second character that's going to be coming out alongside Sparkle, of course, in the second half of version 2.0. Is he good, and is he still worth it to get in version 2.0? Very, very different questions altogether, but let's first answer the easier one to talk. Is he still good in version 2.0? The straight up answer, if any of you who wants a TLDR, is yes, I think he's still relevant. In fact, some would actually argue that he's a lot better than Zila, who also came out around the same time as him. His chart, if you, I'm just going to put it out on screen. If you look at his chart, he's actually been relatively okay. The only times where he noticed a dip, for example, is like Kafka's appearance in the game. Then people like started rotating to another lightning DPS like Kafka. But other than that, if you are talking about alternatives for a lightning DPS that looks as great as him, a male character like him, maybe you only play with male characters only account kind of thing. Or you maybe you don't really care about Kafka's design, you don't really care about Acheron's design, another lightning nihility character. You prefer male characters because it's cooler and stuff. He's the only option right now in the lightning category. Your other option as a four star is like Serval also, all female characters. Uh, that is definitely his unique niche that is right now in the game. And he has gotten a lot better because the developers somehow seem to like putting every single update somehow wants to buff Jing Yuan a little bit here and there. Uh, we saw it in many films. You have like, for example, the new Path Fiction game mode that is out. Uh, it has recently been added in the game. Let's see whether I can see that over here so I can just like showcase. Where's my Path Fiction? It's like somewhere how one of these, I guess it's this one here. So you have like Pure Fiction here, AOE game mode. Uh, Forgotten Hall has always been an iffy thing with like erudition characters depending on what you want. Uh, but Pure Fiction AOE characters benefit a lot. Now it's like kind of like a Kafka meta because uh, rightly so, they want to sell like DOT characters like Black Swan. Kafka just recently came out. So of course, these two characters are a little bit more pushed into the limelight. But Jing Yuan definitely is going to be a character that does very well in Pure Fiction. Very similar to a character like Argenti, similar to a character like Himiko, who are way more in the meta now because of Pure Fiction. And Jing Yuan directly better benefited from that. Not only did he benefit from new game modes, the new characters being added into the game are tons of help as well. So Ting Yun, of course, is his like wife from the very beginning, right? In fact, in 1.0. He loves Ting Yuen, like from the bottom of his heart, gives him everything he needs. But recently, we also had more characters to benefit him, especially meta characters. If any of you pull uh, other of these characters for like meta, Fu Shen is very good. She provides uh, CC resistance one instance for him, gives him crit rate and makes him like more survivable too. For those of you who don't really know Ting Yuen's kit, is if Lightning Lord is unable, if he is unable to act, his uh, ability, the Lightning Lord is also unable to act. So Fu Shen does. Uh, offer a bit of that with a bit of quantum break damage overall uh, good sustain for Jing Yuan too which is very very nice Ranmi on the other hand also another character that was also released recently added even more to Jing Yuan by offering him a lot more break damage offering him a lot more uh, damage buffing you might even have rest threat defense threat if you have Eidolons and whatnot and also a lot of skill point positivity from characters like Fu Shen, Ting Yuan as well as Ranmi hyper carrying this guy to really do like a lot a lot of damage there are like jokes on the internet going around saying he's like mid yuan mid yuan but at the very beginning 1.0 he was very very weak very lackluster because he didn't have so much like characters to support back then can you imagine we only had ting yun so everyone was trying to hold her hand and maybe with bronya at the same time uh, one thing i want to talk about is back then bronya is not really like a super ideal candidate for ting yun and the reason is because Bronya boosts him up, allows him to act and get the stacks very often. But by the time Lightning Lord takes his action in the field, the buff on Bronya usually have ward off. So a character like Jingyuan couldn't use one of the best characters in the game for the longest time. Uh, that is why, of course, he saw a little bit of negative downside in terms of overall performance. But now with like Ranmei coming up, it's like so much more efficient to hyper carry a character like Jingyuan as well. His only downside really is he's in a very crowded space. If you are indifferent between waifu and husbando characters, you just want a lightning DPS. There are many ways of doing it, especially if like a character, for example, like Kafka give you access to DOT. But if you can, none about that then it doesn't really affect you. I just want to put that out as a point. We'll talk about upcoming characters in a bit, but let me tell you why else he also got a lot better than before. Next one I want to talk about is the light cones over here. For any of you who are thinking maybe you want to like pull some light cones for him, uh, this is the one that is everyone is going for. It's like one of his it's his best light cone, I think, still to today. But it's expensive. It's a signature light cone. It's a five-star limited light cone. It gives him everything he needs. Follow-up attack bonus, skill ultimate damage, crit damage bonus. And the reason why Jing Yuan was a bit tricky to recommend for a lot of people in the beginning is we didn't have too many good options for Jing Yuan. 
The other one's probably like Knight of Milky Way, but as you can see here, it's also not very fantastic. It's attack bonuses, uh, inflicted with weakness break, some damage increase. Nothing that gives him like crit, crit damage attack, which he super, super loves and stuff. Um, until today, of course, we have this, the day the Cosmo fell, which is like a free light cone. In a sense, if you are attacking two enemies with uh, lightning weakness, the whereas crit damage is increased by 40%. This is pretty good. Uh, is a good in between for a player who is just like wanting to get into Jing Yuan, doesn't have the resources to go all the way. This is, I think, a positive thing as well. So every patch, Jing Yuan kind of enjoys it a little bit more. Definitely worth considering as a free to play option as well. As you can see here, not many other free to play options. Genius Repose arguably could be also pretty good, but you have to defeat enemies uh, and you only get like 24% here. Whereas this one, the day the Cosmo fell, you can get it at S5 and it's 40% and it's free. Generous Repose is not free, it's still limited. Other than that, we also had new relics that has been introduced into the game. Very, very well. So he has like new characters benefiting him, new enemies benefiting him, new game modes benefiting him. Not only that, he also has new relics, both the 4-piece and the 2-piece, which benefits him. Uh, the first one, of course, is the Ash, the Ash Blazing Grand Duke. Notice how Hoyoverse really took their time to rerun Jing Yuan. They know also that he wasn't like at his top form when the game was first released in 1.0. But now, after like, uh, almost a year is a lot more favorable for him now and I think it's reached the point where it becomes a bit fair and this character is starting to get a bit underrated in my opinion definitely because so many good things have happened to him and people are somehow still not talking about it and that's what this video aims to do we are always a very analytical fair channel uh, and I think I want to give Jing Yuan props for that too so increased damage dealt by follow-up attacks by 20% and whenever the wearer uses follow-up attacks, increase the attack by 6% every time the follow-up attack deals damage. I do believe, and I'm not a Jing Yuan main, so I don't use him regularly. In fact, I haven't used him in the last like six months. But I think that this thing works for every single of these tiny instances. So you get the whole entire stack throughout the thing. So this stat, from the calculations of what I've seen, it works very, very well with Jing Yuan and it's best in slot. Um, by a good margin so very very good is also added recently into the game the other one that has also been recently added is firmament frontline glamour this one usually 160 is not what people tend to go for it's a bit difficult to reach if you do not have Esther and you're playing with Ron, Ron me instead uh, but 135 is actually quite achievable if you just slap on like one speed boots Ron me gives you like I think another 10 percent 10 speed on top of that passively in her uh, her own tracers so very easy to get 135 that's a 12% attack 12% damage bonus as well. So benefits Jing Yuan quite a bit with a Firmament Frontline 2-piece as well as a 4-piece Ash Blazing Grand Duke. So definitely, definitely got a lot better in version 2.0. Now here's the thing. At this point, he is a good character, but the question then comes, is he worth it in 2.0 still? I think in the near future, if you don't care about any of the upcoming characters, maybe you don't like any of their design, you're looking for a DPS that's flashy, you really fell in love with his animations because of all the marketing that Hoyoverse has put out, uh, you will be happy with this character, he won't be totally useless. His community is super dedicated, so you will find very good like-minded individuals as well to talk about this particular character. Uh, people, A good number of people do stand by him compared to a lot of the other characters who tend to be a bit more uh, very quick to flight once their character drops off of meta. But Jing Yuan mains actually stay with him all the way, which is very respectable for our community as well. Uh, one of the biggest questions is, of course, upcoming DPS is coming up. We already have Kafka in the Lightning category and Acheron, People are saying that also could be very, very meta. If that's the case, I personally, as a content creator, I like to be responsible for my recommendations. I just can't see a recommendation where I think Jing Yuan is very worth it now that boxes out all his other competitions. For the sake of Lightning category being super competitive, if you are a player that has no bias, you don't care about female male character or what it does, I just see him in a presence in a very crowded space and I do not think he's very worth it in version 2.0 for the sake of the trend of the meta seems to be going for a, like a double DPS with, for example, Kafka DOT with Black Swan. Kafka offers that lightning in that sense. You have Akron, who is also a lightning DPS coming out, who might be a bit of a different style compared to him. T uh, Ting Yuan still uses very uh, rudimentary or very uh, simple characters like Ting Yuan uses Ranmei, Fu Shen, who are arguably like the top four characters in the game. You could argue that you swap Ting Yuan out and you slap any main DPS in this slot. For example, you can slap in uh, Ting Liu, you can slap in Imbibitor Lune. They probably will do well with these three characters as well and as would any other character. So see how you may, that's my own personal bias. Don't shoot me. I'm just telling you my honest opinions and that's what this channel is all about. If you appreciate such straight to point honest content, do give us a like, comment, subscribe for more such future content and see you in the next one. What you must do now 
is ponder its significance. You can return to the waking.